Hey, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. So today we are going to be making t-shirts and also a pillow. <laughs> In this video, I'm gonna actually walk you through how I'm doing that with this heat press. Now, typically when you've seen me do crafting type videos like this, I'm usually using the Cricut heat press, which is still a really good heat press to use but it is smaller. And so I think if you wanna do bigger projects, if you wanna do maybe more professional projects, if you wanna do hats, cups, this machine has all the attachments. It's an eight in one by Viver. They did provide this. They didn't pay me to say any of this, but they gave me the machine. And so we're gonna use this to, to make some uh, t-shirts. <laughs> and here's the thing, you don't even need a Cricut in order to make t-shirts because I didn't even realize this, but there is paper that you can just print. I mean, maybe other people knew this, but I did not know this. There is paper that you can just print from your printer and make t-shirts <laughs> and they actually turn out. This is my Empower Tools 101 t-shirt. By the way, if you didn't know, I am doing an online Power Tools course. So if you've always wanted to learn how to use Power Tools, you can go to my link down below and you can join me for Empower Tools 101 when it opens. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into kind of the overview of this machine. When I got it out of the box, it literally was, everything was already in place. The only thing that was not in place is the little thingy-majiggy back here, which is the temperature control box. And it, there was literally no setup required. Everything else was already attached and you didn't have to do anything else. Now it does come with these heat mats. I believe it's 15 by 15 and I think they even sell a bigger one. So if you've got a large t-shirt that you're working on or maybe you're doing like a pillow or something and you want to do a, a larger surface area, that's what I like about this. And you get even pressure all the way down. You do have to put the feet on. Let's see if I can tip this over. All right, <laughs> you do have to put the feet on. They've got these little rubber uh, grippy things on the bottom because if you don't put these feet on the bottom, then it will tip over when you start maneuvering this top part in this way, right? So once you put your design here, you'll move this out of the way. And if you don't have those sticky feet on a steady surface, it will tip over and that's not what you wanna do because this whole area here will get hot. And so you don't wanna be able to, you know, you don't wanna touch it and grab it as it's falling over. So this is not on, so that's why I'm able to touch it, but it's got the handles and this, again, this everything here is already set up except for the control box and the feet. And that's literally the only thing you have to do in order to get this thing up and running. I will tell you that I don't think that the instructions were very good. I had to watch YouTube videos just to figure out how to use this. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think the instructions could be a lot better, but I think if you are doing t-shirts in bulk or if you are doing pillows or something where you might wanna sell it and you want something a little bit more professional, I think this is probably the way to go. Now, this is the first shirt that I made. Jeans load the gun, but diet and lifestyle pull the trigger. It's a quote that I read somewhere in a book and I just thought it was genius. And I was like, I gotta make a shirt. <laughs> so I went to Target, got some cotton shirts. This one's a little bit small and it's see-through. So I probably won't be wearing this shirt. I do need to make some more, but I love this quote. So I just wanted to kind of walk you through really quickly how I did this. I'm not gonna go through the full tutorial because I think there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that you can watch and get a, probably a better understanding of how to do this accurately. But just a couple of things, you are gonna be using iron-on vinyl for this. It's called heat transfer paper. Depending on the product that you buy, it could be called different things, but it's iron-on, heat transfer, you get the idea. Now we're gonna to have to cut this as a mirrored image when you're doing this on a Cricut because the way that we're gonna be peeling back this vinyl, which you'll see in just a moment, if it's not in a mirrored cutout, then you're not gonna be able to read it. It's actually gonna go on backwards. So that's the main thing that you wanna keep in mind. I am gonna be using a mat here, you'll see in just a moment. So I'm gonna select that I'm cutting this on the mat. And then when I go to look at the image, you'll see that I need to click to the left that it's a mirrored cutout. Now the shiny part is gonna be face down and I get this wrong all the time. <laughs> it goes into the Cricut machine. 
it will cut it out and then you have to pull away all the excess that you don't want. And this is the part that's really critical because you want to make sure you're pulling out all of those little pieces when you're doing this weeding. And I didn't record this part, but you want to carefully peel that plastic sheet away from the mat so that you've got your heat transfer and it's ready to go. Now, once we have this ready to go, everything's been weeded, we're going to turn the machine on. And this is what the instructions don't tell you very well. Like what temperatures do you set it at? So you have to do some Googling depending on what you're heat transferring. I had to set mine at 305. I hit set again, set the timer for 15 seconds, and it's gonna ask you Celsius, Fahrenheit, and then we have to let this heat up. So you'll see that it starts heating up pretty quickly. This goes all the way to 480. I wanna point out that the Cricut Easy Press goes to 400. Now, I don't really know what the difference is and why I would need to go to 480, but just to let you know that there is a difference. And if you are doing t-shirts, because this is a 15 by 15 surface area, you're gonna be able to do the entire, well, depending on the size of your design, you're gonna be able to do the entire area in just one heat press versus having to move an iron around or the Easy Press moving that around. So here, I'm just doing a, uh, preliminary heat, um, which is recommended, right? So I'm just kind of priming the cotton surface and making sure, of course, that you keep your hands out of the way. All right, so let's talk a little bit about getting the design to be centered. So what I did was just folded the shirt in half, and then I'm going to press it so that I've got a nice center line right down the center of that shirt when I open it up. And I'm going to press it the other way as well so that I've got a cross in the middle. And then that's going to help me center my design right there where it should be. Now, you'll see here that I'm going to just kind of lightly fold my design so that I've got a reference point. And you can, I mean, you can measure if you want. But really, this is a pretty good way to make sure that it gets centered. It's not too high, not too low. Because you don't want to ruin whatever it is that you're heat transferring, right? You don't want to have to go and get multiple t-shirts just because you're practicing or you made a mistake. Now, you do have to use a piece of Teflon paper to cover up the design. And you want to make sure that you're following the recommendations for whatever it is the material that you're using in terms of how long you have to do a heat press. We're using cotton, and so 15 seconds is appropriate. I did find that I had to do a couple of 15 second um, heat presses here. Some of the, the lettering just wanted to come off. It had not adhered. But I will point out there's something very important whenever you're doing heat press. Make sure you know that the heat transfer that you're using, whether or not it's a hot peel or a cold peel. And what that means is that this was a cool peel or a cold peel, which I had to let this sit for about two or three minutes before I could pull it off. Now, if I tried to pull this off while it was still hot, that is when the letters started coming off. I had to let it completely cool down and then I could peel it and it stuck very well to the cotton and it looked fabulous. Now there are some things that are hot peels like this glitter heat transfer. This is the glitter transfer that I did for the pillow for my friend's bedroom makeover. And I did it pretty much the same way as I did the t-shirt, but it's a different material. So it has to have, you know, there's different rules to it. Now this is the image that I used that was the same image as the artwork that we created for her bathroom makeover. So check up there in the corner down below for the link, check out her bathroom makeover, and you'll be able to see her bedroom makeover later on in this video as well. So this is the pillow we're making, just kind of like a denim type fabric with this print on the front. Now, the t-shirts that I made had a different kind of vinyl. This one again is glitter. And so if you look at the packaging, it'll actually tell you what well, it may tell you what temperature. This is at 320, so it's a little hotter than the t-shirt that we had done with the regular vinyl. So again, we set the heat press to 320 degrees, set it for 15 seconds. And if you have to do it again for another 15 or another seven or eight seconds, that's fine. Now, you don't actually have to know how to make pillows. I do have a tutorial on how to do no-sew pillows just using iron-on heat tape. So you can do that very easily. Just have a pillow form to put in there. And then you've got a cool little pillow. Now, this is my friend's bedroom. We did the makeover recently. You should have just seen that published on my YouTube channel. And it just turned out great. The room is fantastic. This is what it looked like before. And then afterward, it just had lots of color. So I didn't want to put a colorful pillow in there. I just wanted something to kind of ground that reading corner. So if you want to see that full tutorial on her bedroom makeover, be sure to click the link up there in the corner or down in the description. 
And this is what I thought was really cool is the fact that you can order some heat transfer paper. You don't even need to have a Cricut, right? Like you can get really fancy and spend a lot of money on this, but if you're just somebody that likes to just make t-shirts and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a Cricut, you can get the transfer paper. I think these were, these were about $10 from Amazon. So you've got the transfer paper for lighter fabrics, and then you've got transfer paper for dark fabrics. And you would put this in your um, inkjet or your color jet, either one is fine. And once you actually print out your design, you would peel it back and then it kind of gives you like a rubbery design. And then you would do the heat press with that. Now, I don't know how this holds up in the washing machine because I haven't washed it yet, but you do have to wait at least 24 hours before you wash it. And I will let you know how this turns out once it's gone through a wash. All right, so I hope you enjoyed these quick little projects. If you want to make your own t-shirts, if you want to make your own pillows, it's really not that difficult and you can be really creative. Now, whether you have space or time, budget, if you need to do something that's a little bit larger or more professional, I would say go with the professional Viva 8-1 heat press. But if you want to do smaller projects, you can still go with the Cricut. Either one is fine. It just depends on what your crafting needs are. And you can make your own shirts like, I freaking love this shirt. Oh, I didn't even mention that I created this design using ChatGPT. <laughs> I used AI, and if you have used AI to do images, you know that it's either hit or miss. I mean, you'll have like three arms and like weird stuff going on, but when it gets it right, it gets it right. But remember, I'm doing an online power tools course, so if you are somebody who wants to learn how to use power tools with me, then definitely go to the link down below, thriftiving.com forward slash tools, and you can sign up to be on my wait list. So when it's available, I'll see you in the classroom. All right, I'll see you next project. Hey, what's up? It's Serena PF here from thriftiving.com, eating popcorn, and my shisha. Today we are making t-shirts on a heat press. And this is something that's gonna be really cool because you can use it for t-shirts, we're gonna make pillows, we're gonna make a lot of different things. So let's jump into actually walking through the setup and seeing exactly what we need to do in order to make these t-shirts. Okay? Okay. 